Hey, welcome. In this video, let's take a look at this little setup that I prepared. Uh, it's really simple. Uh, it relies mostly on a for each loop wrapped inside a for loop um, to repeat the operation that we have in there. In this case, it's a Voronoi fracture. And there are a few interesting things that I would like to show you. But before jumping in, let's take a look at some slides that I prepared. So basically, this is the logic that we'll be building. We're going to start with a, with shape in Houdini and just scatter some arbitrary number of points. Uh, use those points to perform a Voronoi fracture. And then after wrapping this logic inside the loop, um, each of the cells will be evaluated once more. And a new set of points will then be scattered uh, for each cell. And those new points will be then used to perform new fractures. And this whole process will be running in parallel, happening at the same time. But since we are going to use a random function, each cell will get a unique number of points. And um, this can create pretty interesting and intricate patterns. So let's jump back to Houdini and start building this. So let's start with a new Houdini file. Um, just create a geo node, lay down, jump inside, delete our file, sop as usual, and lay down a circle. And uh, let's set up this a little bit better for ourselves. Set it to polygon, the primitive type, and the orientation we can change to the ZX plane. All right, let's pump up the divisions a little bit. Maybe do something like 36. Let's turn off that thing there. And before we continue, let me just turn off the background. Uh, actually make it darker. And one more thing. I should actually just have saved this. And at the guides, we can then turn off our origin. So we have a perfect circle laying there in the center. And let's just scatter some points. Connect them to our circle. And let's maybe pump this down to something like 25. <clears throat> Those are our points. Select this. Um, and then we are going to use these points to perform a Voronoi fracture. And our first input is our shape, in this case the circle. And our second input will be the points that we created. And before we just continue, let me just lay down a null. Since we can, might want to swap the input at any time. So let's just do like that. And then call this input. <laughs> All right. And after that, you can see the Voronoi is working. And we can wrap this now inside a for each loop. Let's do that. For each, I'm sorry, for each primitive. That's what we want. And let's just then connect all of these like that. Right, uh, let's pull them back in. Okay, before we wrap this in a for loop and start repeating this operation, uh, I want to set up the scatter node differently. So every time the loop runs, we actually have the chance to control <clears throat> a, bit, a little bit better how many points at the first iteration um, will be then being created. Excuse me. <clears throat> and for that, we're going to select the for each begin and just create a meta import node. This meta import uh, metadata uh, node will then gather information about our loop. And let's select the scatter node and um, give us some space. Click the little gearbox there and add a spare input to the scatter node. And this is going to create uh, for us a channel 
that we can reference a node to. And let's just drag and drop our metadata uh, node day in there. It's going to give us our the, the absolute path to it. We can actually change this maybe to metadata, something simpler. And this gets updated automatically. So basically, this pair input, <coughs> excuse me, uh, this will then give us the chance to refer to this node, to this path uh, inside a function in this node um, as minus one. Uh, just like tooltip is telling us. So we are going to force the total count here on the first iteration to be something uh, not random or maybe in a in a lower uh, in a spe very specific range so we can control the the, the look of it a little bit better. <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, open the the little uh, code code box here for us uh, by clicking alt e and I'm going to start typing a function here. So it's basically going to be a if statement. And we're going to evaluate the first, um, uh, the, the argument that we want to evaluate is if the iteration is the first, which means let's uh, access the iteration uh, by typing detail minus one and accessing the iteration uh, attribute and zero since it's a one-dimensional uh, attribute. <clears throat> so if this detail um, equals to zero, which is the first iteration, we want to, for example, say we uh, 25 points should be scattered. Otherwise, so the third argument of the if statement will be a fit zero one function wrapping a rand function wrapping a detail function. So it's quite a, a little bit to, to it's happening right there, but it's not complicated at all. Um, basically our random function needs a, a seed and I'm actually going to use the, the same iterator, uh, iteration number as our seed. So it's something unique at every time it runs. And I'm going to go outside uh, the, the fit so um, we're going to fit this into a new range, maybe of something like five and 30 points. Let me just check if we, if I got all these parentheses correctly, let's just, just try click apply and accept. Okay, no errors. And uh, since this channel turned green and is showing us 25, it seems uh, it compiled correctly since this is the first iteration and we have 25 points as we wanted, just to be sure. Let's just change this to 30. So we can check this, we'll update, of course. Um, let's go with uh, 20 for now. Uh, the reason I'm doing this function here, uh, the way I did, is basically uh, this setup like for, for fracturing shapes countless times will the, the the big shapes <clears throat> excuse me the big shapes in the beginning will basically define the overall look of this in the end so we want to make sure that we have a better control of how many shapes are in the first iteration we could even maybe this make this a random number as well <clears throat> but let's just keep it to s20 for now so now that we are set up uh, let's just wrap this everything we did inside a for loop. All right, for loop with feedback. That's the one we want. Let's connect our input to the for each uh, to the for loop. Sorry, and connect all of everything that we've done so far. Uh, wrapped in inside the, the for loop. Uh, I should have changed this to something lower, not ten iteration. It's gonna take forever. So I just asked and, uh, and canceled um, to something smaller, like two iterations. So we can now uh, see that it, it, it is indeed working um, as expected. So I'm just gonna pull them here a little bit uh, more organized for us. Um, another thing that I wanted to do uh, is that the Vornoi 
uh, maybe put some um, cut plane offset so we have a little bit of padding uh, between pieces and this indeed uh, looks a little bit better so I'm gonna turn on the one more iteration it's gonna take a little while to compute let's see and you can observe that uh, such a simple setup can give us really interesting patterns and, and shapes this could be used for many different things as you saw in the in the preview uh, picture uh, if you are interested in this and would like to play around with it, there is the, the scene file in the description where I go uh, one step further and extrude these pieces and give it some random um, noise and displace them, which uh, creates some really interesting and nice uh, abstract uh, environments there. So I also wanted to thank uh, Ben Mars from SideFX for providing a indie license so I could render um, the picture that you guys saw in the beginning of the video and that's it for now I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you next time